Hi, so the purpose of this video is to just explain how to do the problems one and four from the homework because I know I skipped that section when we were when I was going over the notes and the video notes. So anyway, we're given a position function as you can see here and we're asked to find uh, and analyze the particle's motion and the first thing we want to do when we want to figure out what, what in the world is going on with this particle by the way the particle is moving left and right along a horizontal line and uh, at time zero just to kind of get started at time zero the position of this moving object is two plus six times zero minus zero squared so we can see that the position at time zero is two. So if we look at a number line, two right there, this particle is actually right there at two at time t equals zero. So at least we know where it is, and then we're gonna talk about its motion. So let's go ahead and try to figure out that. If we remember the velocity of a moving object is the rate of change of the position. So the rate of change means derivative. So the velocity at times at time t is equal to the derivative of the position function. And we know how to find the derivative. That's just using the power rule, 6 minus 2t. OK, well, let's try to figure out, well, when is the velocity equal to 0? Well, the velocity is equal to 0. When is this particle stopped, in other words? The velocity is equal to 0 when 6 minus 2t is equal to 0. And when 2t is equal to 6, in other words, when at the time t equals 3, this particle has stopped moving. Okay. Now, if we look at, let's draw another number line down here. Okay. And um, what we're going to do here is we're going to put 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Okay. So this is the number line which. Uh, which shows us t equal values, okay? In other words, when t equals 3, right here, the particle has stopped. And let me do this. Let me make that a little bit bigger. So we know that right there at t equals 3, the particle has stopped, t equals 3. But then what happened between 0 and 3, okay? Well, the velocity isn't zero at any point in between t equals zero. This is the t-axis, by the way. The t equals zero mark and the t equals three mark, okay? So we know that either the velocity was always positive or the velocity was always negative on that interval, okay? And so let's take a look. Um, if we look at the velocity at one, velocity at one is six minus two, which is positive. Velocity is, uh, at 2 is also positive. And so we know that on this interval here between 0 and 3, the velocity is always positive. Okay? And then once we get past 3, we can see that, let's say we take the velocity at some other test value, like 4. Velocity at 4 is 6 minus 2 times 4. And 6 minus 2 times 4 is negative 2. So that means it's negative on that interval because again the velocity is only zero at time t equals three and so we see the particle then from t equals zero to t equals three the particle is moving to the right okay so we can say uh, what color should I use moving right on the interval from t equals zero to t equals three and then down here at the bottom uh, we'll squeeze that in here that's moving left on the interval from 3 when t is greater than 3, okay? And so that at least gives us some movement, and then we'll go to the next, uh, next slide, and uh, let's remember what just happened. We have s of t, and s of t is equal to uh, 2 plus 6t minus t squared. We saw that the velocity of t was equal to 6 minus 2t and then the acceleration which is the derivative of the velocity is negative 2. So in other words the, the acceleration is always negative and since the acceleration is always negative we see that uh, we know that the 
pushing of the movement, like it, maybe it's always going against the wind, but pushing of the movement, or the wind is always blowing to the left or whatever, um, but pushing going left is the acceleration being negative. So always less than zero, always. Okay. So that being said, we can now figure out a, uh, a chart here. We have the t, t values. And from t equals 0 to t equals 3, the velocity is negative. Velocity negative, oh, sorry, velocity is positive on that interval. So the velocity being positive on that interval here and the velocity being negative the rest of the time, but acceleration is always negative no matter what time. Okay, velocity equals 0 right here. So we would say since we had that discussion in class that if the acceleration and the velocity are moving against each other pushing left, let me write that down also. So we have a pushing left but moving right that means the particle is slowing down. Slowing down on the interval from 0 to 3. Okay, and then over here we have pushing right, sorry, pushing left always, pushing left, and we have moving left, and so that means that this particle is speeding up. Speeding up over the entire interval for t is greater than 3. Okay, speeding up on that interval. And uh, if we want to kind of show on a number line now the, the axis on which this particle is moving, if we uh, remember, we started here at, at 2, so this is where the particle is at time t equals 0, and the particle is moving to the right, it says moving to the right, okay, so moving to the right from t equals 0 to t equals 3, but we need to figure out well, what in the world is the position of the particle at t equals 3, so let's figure that out. Uh, let's do that up here. S of 3, S at 3, is equal to 2 plus 6 times 3 minus 3 squared. And so we have 2 plus 18, which is 20, minus 9. And 20 minus 9 is 11. Okay, so let's go all the way back to, um, to the number line. And if we just mark 11 right there, we have the particle has stopped right there. And that particle, again, at t equals 3, the particle is moving to the right on the interval from t equals 0, for here's t equals 0, to t equals 3, moving to the right. And then the particle stops at t equals 3, and we know it moves back to the left. So it's moving back to the left forever and speeding up the whole way. Okay? And that's it. So the particle moves to the right, that way, and then it goes back to the left, and that's probably hard to, hard to see that. But uh, that's the movement of the particle. So it gets farthest to the right at t equals 3, it, uh, and the farthest point to the right is x equals 11 at t equals 3, and again it just continues to speed up and move to the left, and that's it. That's how you do problem number one. And we answer all the questions, speeding up, slowing down, position, analysis, acceleration, motion. Yep, got it. All right, so try the next one, and I'll make another video for problem number four.